The mystery has always been there about what would have happened after the Shadow Dragon Saga in Dragon Ball GT if the show didn't get cancelled. So with that being said, the one and only place to start off this what if story if GT never ended is to start in the Shadow Dragon Saga itself, with the intention of the story going even further beyond. So this is how the fight in the Shadow Dragon's arc will go from here. Vegeta arrives and becomes an Uzaru thanks to Bulma's Brute Swaves machine. From there, Vegeta becomes a golden Uzaru and Super Saiyan 4 through his own control, just like he did in the original story by himself. After Vegeta becomes a Super Saiyan 4, here's where the events differ. The Brute's Waves machine would have not been destroyed during the Metamorphosis. The intention would be for Goku and Vegeta to team up as Super Saiyan 4s and take down Omega Shenron together. In the original story, Omega was written to be able to tank both Goku and Vegeta at Super Saiyan 4, but in this story, Vegeta would step up towards Omega Shenron and Goku would receive a Brute's Waves machine boost by Bulma as well, a well-deserved one after fighting the dragons all day. However, the Brute's Waves machine would only have enough power to fuel Goku this one time only, as it was created only to be used twice, one main and one backup. So now the machine is no longer usable to fuel other Saiyans there, which saves the tension somewhat. Vegeta realizes that Omega Shenron is a handful, but with the rejuvenated Goku back in the fight, things would be written a little different now with two fresh Super Saiyan 4s. The story wouldn't encourage Omega beating both of them down so they have to fuse. No, we are altering it so the fresh Goku and Vegeta are able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe together with the final Shadow Dragon if they work together and it will be a more balanced fight. This would honor the appearance and transformation of Vegeta too rather than it seeming empty. This fight would be focusing on the chemistry of Goku and Vegeta, the story of teamwork. Remember, Goku alone was able to land a Dragon Fist and almost annihilate Omega Shenron alone. Regeneration saved him, but with Vegeta there, the chances of killing Omega if they played their cards right have now increased. And in the original story, Goku was weakening, so two fresh Super Saiyan 4s here would make this a good fight. This is where the greatest brawl in Dragon Ball history would commence. The battle would be back and forth, literally a gritty beatdown, Dragon vs Saiyans. Goku and Vegeta would form a plan of attack, utilizing old school techniques such as after image to create an opportunity and land in a full power, 10 times final shine Kamehameha on a defenseless Omega. However, Omega would prove very difficult to hit this move on, but they eventually hit the attack after Goku used a solar flare to blind Omega. The attack would almost cripple Omega, knocking the Dragon Balls out of him, but he would not be dead yet. To Goku and Vegeta's shock, he starts absorbing the Dragon Balls once again, but Goku would grab the 4-star ball and swallow it so Omega is not quite at full power. At this point, fusion would be a consideration, but Omega would grant them no time to perform this after almost dying just then. He saw how serious it was. And if Dragon Ball GT is to continue after the saga, the appearance of Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta should be saved later for down the line for its own special moment, and not to be clustered here. Instead, during the fight with Omega, Goku and Vegeta are losing ground, not able to last with the dragon. This was when Nova Shenron returns, due to Goku having the 4-star ball inside him. From here, Nova Shenron would see that Goku is still a Super Saiyan 4, as well as Vegeta there as a Super Saiyan 4, and wouldn't look to trick Omega Shenron into lowering his defense in order to try and take him down. Instead, he would instantly side with the Primal Saiyans and look to defeat Omega as a unit. 3 versus 1. With Nova Shenron aiming to kill Omega Shenron with his secret ability, Goku and Vegeta would attempt to distract Omega to do this. Nova eventually grabs Omega Shenron and activates his Nova Sphere. In this story, he would not talk to Omega. He would keep his mouth shut and continue to destroy Omega before Omega realizes he can possess Nova's body. The Nova Sphere activates, and what remains is Omega Shenron's body fall into the battlefield, with Nova still remaining in control. The Dragon Balls fall from Sin, who is on the brink of death and cannot draw the balls back to him. Goku and Vegeta grab a few Dragon Balls just in case, but Nova tells the Saiyans not to interfere in this moment, as he will finally kill off Sin Shenron himself. This evil being created by the negative energy of the Dragon Balls will be stopped by none other than another Shadow Dragon. Except Nova was the Dragon with Honor, having been the Dragon associated with Goku, Grandpa Gohan, and having his negative energy cleansed whilst being part of Goku momentarily. This was fitting. This was poetry. Nova stands over Sin Shenron, aims his palm towards the evil dragon, and tells him, A good place like Earth is no place for scum like you. With one powerful blast, Nova destroys the evil Shadow Dragon, thus leaving Nova now as the final Shadow Dragon. At this moment, Goku thanks Nova for his help in defeating the evilest of Shadow Dragons and wants him to stay, but Nova knows in order to restore the Dragon Balls and bring balance back, all Shadow Dragons must fall. 
The negative energy was still surrounding the planet, but Nova said the only way to remove it is by cleansing it with pure light energy. This gave Goku an idea. And it was in this moment he transformed back to a child and began collecting energy for a spirit bomb. This spirit bomb would not be universal in size. He would gather enough energy from the planet and close allies similar to what he did in GT to start cleansing the atmosphere. The Genki Dama was formed and the planet began to cleanse from all of the negative energy surrounding it. The Earth was finally saved, but this only left Nova who said to Goku that he was looking forward to a rematch at one point. But since that battle, Goku has grown far too strong now, so that was no longer an interest to him. Nova had no ambition to face Vegeta, so in this moment, he told Goku he was ready to die to bring balance back to the Dragon Balls and Earth, telling Goku to throw the Genki Dharma at him, and he will not fight against it. Goku did not want to do this. He found it incredibly hard to kill Nova knowing the Dragon was the most humble and honorable of all of them, and he even saved Pan's life. But Vegeta reminded Kakarot that the dragon is a hero and he is choosing his own destiny like a warrior. Both he and Goku would expect the same respect in a moment like this. Goku cries and he throws the Genki Dama in pain where Nova had no intention of raising his power to stop it. And in that moment, the final shadow dragon dies like a true role model to protect the planet, destroying the last of the shadow dragons and the last of the negative energy. The Shadow Dragon Saga comes to a close with the four-star dragon defeating the evil Sin Shenron. At this moment, the original Shenron would appear from the restored Dragon Balls. There would be no request for Goku to leave with Shenron in this event. However, the Dragon Balls would become off-limits from this point in the story, which increased the tension even more. Summon up the consequences of the story of overusing the Dragon Balls. No more wishing people back to life from here, except this one time only. A few final freebies from Shenron for restoring balance. Repairing planet Earth's damage and bringing those who are not evil back to life who died since the events of Hell opening. This would not include Nova Shenron. All Shadow Dragons must die in order for there to be balance. But Goku had one more wish, which he said wouldn't be too much of a problem for Shenron if he's willing to grant it. Shenron nodded and said, only because it's you, Goku. The energy within the four-star ball is inclining me to help you this one time only. A final help in hand from Nova. Goku thanks Shenron and looks at all of his friends and family. He smiles and says, Shenron, I wish for you to restore me back to my original grown-up self before I was turned into a kid. Life at home is difficult and awkward, and I want to be the husband, father, and grandpa that my family needs me to be. Shenron shakes his head and explains that wish was made with the Black Star Dragon Balls, that he could easily grant that wish in general, but may not be able to reverse the power of a Black Star wish without the Black Star Dragon Balls. But Goku says something to Shenron that Piccolo once told him. He told Shenron to believe in himself, believe in his own power. For the first time, Shenron felt some sort of connection to another, and he said, very well, I will try. He told Goku to close his eyes, and Shenron makes a thunderous roar as Shenron begins to radiate a bright light with a huge amount of power showing itself. He says, farewell, never summon me again. And Shenron fades into the sky in a huge explosion of bright lights as the Dragon Balls rise with him, but suddenly turn to stone and fall to the ground. Did it work? Goku opens his eyes and looks at his hands, pauses for a moment. He looks at everyone who all have a look of shock on their face. Goku becomes an old man with gray hair and a mustache. I'm just kidding, scholars. Pan shouts, Grandpa is back, and Goku is once again the same adult Goku from the beginning of Dragon Ball GT. Goku hugs his family, and Vegeta says with a smile, It's about time you showed up, old man. I was beginning to worry I'd be rocking the silver hair long before you do. And so, from here, Shenron was gone. Dende does not intend to create any more Dragon Balls from here, but would remain as a guardian of Earth, whatever duties that may have to undertake. But where do the characters go from here after such a dark saga? There would be times of peace, a time skip, a slice of life, a focus on new characters, and an upcoming Budokai Tenkaichi martial arts tournament that would test the fighting abilities of all the fighters. Don't you dare miss this exciting continuation of Dragon Ball GT.
Over two years pass after the battle with the Shadow Dragons. The 31st Budokai Tenkaichi would be approaching, where many characters would get a focus rather than just Goku and Vegeta. Mr. Satan had finally retired, with the previous tournament him going out on a high note after Oob let him win. The tournaments raised far more interest and unpredictability from the Z-Warriors, I mean GT Warriors. Perhaps this will be the time that the original prodigy and successor of Goku, Oob, will get his shine to redeem his poor use up until now in GT. Goku would have been training with Oob in the two years after the Shadow Dragons. Oob had grown incredibly strong since the Shadow Dragons arc, where Goku, being well known in martial arts tournaments, decided to put Oob's power and skill to the test in the upcoming one. Goku thought it would be a great idea to put Oob's skills up against the best of Earth. Oob really wanted to prove himself as this prodigy that Goku always believed him to be. Goku instead would act as a coach, a master in Oob's corner, and decided that he did not want to compete in this tournament, taking more of a back seat after having Goku time. He instead would want to watch the competition from the sidelines, because let's be honest here, he has every right to believe no one is his equal at this point. Goku considers himself beyond everyone in terms of power, and doesn't get that excited unless there's someone as strong or stronger around. But who else would enter this tournament to be of competition to the newly trained Oob? Would the likes of Vegeta or Gohan even be interested anymore? Actually, they would. Due to there being no more danger in the world, they still enjoyed the spirit of battle. Both would indeed decide to enter this tournament for the fun of it, and in many fighters' cases, for the prize money. Goten and Trunks would too. Interestingly, they would have decided on this long before the tournament, and trained ever since. Gohan and Vegeta would not be the same as they were in the Shadow Dragon's arc. A lot had changed. The day of the Tenkaichi finally arrives, and there is a lot of competitiveness between all the fighters. It was a pleasant change of atmosphere from all the evil in the world. The Tenkaichi was a place where warriors could be warriors. Their fighting spirits were all super high. For the first time in years, a world without any Dragon Balls had truly changed everybody. At the entrance of the arena, Goku would arrive with Oob first, Goku being punctual for a change. They would meet and greet the fighters arriving. Tien and Yamcha would arrive and shake Goku and Oob's hands, always having respect for each other. Tien was sad to hear Goku wouldn't be competing this year, and told him that he should keep an eye on him and Yamcha's matches because they're not the same as they were years ago. Tien and Yamcha had really been training hard. Soon, the Capsule Corp gang would arrive with Bulma excited to see Goku, and Vegeta walking up to him looking as serious as ever. It's Vegeta, and he's wearing his moustache. You're not entering, are you, Kakarot? I can tell. Goku asks, Hey Vegeta, what's with the moustache again? Can't you see, Kakarot? I'm the real Vegeta. Android Saga Vegeta got nothing on me. But in all seriousness, Vegeta looks at Oob. Vegeta smiles and looks back to Goku. I see how it is. And rightfully so, old friend. He pats Goku on the shoulder in respect and says, Once I get through your apprentice here, you're next, Kakarot. Oob shouts over to Vegeta and tells him he's looking forward to seeing him in the finals, but think again if he's winning. Vegeta smiles. Finally, I was beginning to think this place would be a bore. See you in there, kid. Oop says to Goku, Master Goku, Vegeta's definitely changed, hasn't he? This could be tough. But Goku replies, As long as you don't get hit by the mustache, you should be able to win. The Son family arrived. Goten, Gohan, Chi Chi, Videl, Goku hugs his family. And Goku's in shock at Gohan, who looks in better condition than he was all those years ago. He tells Oob that it's not just Vegeta you need to watch out for. But Gohan mentions the training he's done with Goten and Trunks will pay off. The three half Saiyans have been privately training together, breaking their limits, and now they're going to prove it in this tournament. Vegeta had taken a different approach in his training, already confident in his power as a Super Saiyan 4, and finally learning how to transform into it at will without a tail, it opened the doors to new potential. He focused his training on his daughter Bulla. Bulla had potential that scared Vegeta, to the point where, over the last two years, she even pushed his own training at times. Bulla was entering the tournament with one goal in mind. She wanted to beat her childhood rival Pan, and this couldn't have made Vegeta any more prouder. But what exactly had Pan been doing over the last two years? Who had she trained with? Nobody kept secrets better than Pan lately, but she was there at the tournament too, although she didn't arrive with the family. She was already there getting ice cream and walked over to everyone, as cheery as ever, and was looking forward to entering. She and Bulla locked eyes, and they both knew this was a chance to prove themselves. Videl looks to Goku. I thought Pan was with you. 
But Goku replies, not me. I thought she was home with you guys. I only came here with Oob. Pan smiles. And then Gohan asks her, where have you been, Pan? I thought you were with Dad. You've been so mysterious lately, going out without telling us. But Pan tells them not to worry whilst laughing. She points to Uncle Goten and Trunks. Worry about yourselves. They look petrified. She points at the arena doors where Mr. Satan is calling them all in. He tells them that he isn't competing anymore, but will be honored to host it and deliver the championship title to the winner. There is no junior division this year. There is just one main competition. Anyone can enter and go through the qualifiers, but only 16 will make it into the tournament bracket. Everyone are ready to showcase the results of their training. This is where Dragon Ball GT goes back to basics, where martial arts competitions matter. Skill, passion, and guts. Just who of these incredible warriors has what it takes to become the strongest under the heavens? An old friend appears running behind late. It's Krillin, who was restored in Shenron's final wish. Is he competing? It would be foolish not to. 18 and Marin are there too, and walking behind them. Another old friend who has a lot of stories to tell from over the years, especially during Hell's Invasion. It's Android 17. But not just any ordinary Android 17. It's Super Android 17. How is Super Android 17 back if one of Shenron's final wishes would restore all the good people since Hell's Invasion? Without Dr. Mew and Dr. Jiro's evil influence, without the darkness of Hell opening, Super 17 would basically be Earth 17 and Hellfighter 17, where he is still good at the core. The good inside Earth's Android 17 was in complete control. It wouldn't be fair if a good Android 17 didn't get revived, but his body did not infuse into two Android 17s, so he has to remain as Super Android 17. During the death of Super 17, Goku had said to Android 18 that he noticed something in Super 17. There was good in him, and he cared for Android 18. Super 17 was just used by Dr. Mew. This will be interesting. The tournament is already looking hot, and it's not even started. The tournament bracket will soon be made. Who will fight who, and what new levels of power will we witness? Hurry up and get in there, Goku. You're going to miss out on all these amazing battles. Next time on Dragon Ball GT. The fighters make it through the qualifying rounds and the tournament bracket was set for the Budokai. In the first round, it's Vegeta versus Android 18 a rematch that was decades in the making. Vegeta promised himself not to use Super Saiyan 4, but Android 18 had a surprise of her own. Having been training since the Shadow Dragon saga, and also learning more about Android 17's Super Fusion form, Android 18 had gone to Bulma in secret, the only person alive that was as intelligent, or if not more intelligent, than Dr. Jiro and Dr. Mu, and she looked for her assistance in acquiring the necessary upgrades to enhance her body. No, not those type of enhancements. Well, they did come as part of the package deal, if you want to in your dirty imagination. But yes, Android 18 had become as strong as Super Android 17 because Bulma is a friggin' genius, and she didn't mind working on a project that would serve as a great challenge in battle for her husband Vegeta. Even he needs to keep his Saiyan blood bubbling, because he's still a Saiyan and loves a good fight. There was good intentions in this. 18 had been out of the game for far too long, and this was the perfect time to get back into it, as Super Android 18. Because every support character deserves a plot convenient boost to catch up to GT's broken power-ups. Plus, she wanted the prize money. Vegeta and 18's battle begins, and he is very surprised at 18's power to hold her own, where it eventually pushes him to use his Super Saiyan 2 form in a desperate struggle. Vegeta had grown leaps and bounds since the Super 17 arc, so his Super Saiyan 2 power was efficient right now, but 18 was giving him a run for his money. Vegeta needed to save his Super Saiyan 4 power for the rest of the tournament, as he felt Oob and even Gohan could be very tough challenges. No Senzu beans exist anymore, and healing is not permitted in between rounds. Fighters had to be smart with their conditioning, but for someone like Android 18, stamina is not really a problem now is it? But in Vegeta's efforts to maintain his maximum power and try to eliminate 18 with basic combat skills, he was caught off guard by the cunning 18's sharp surge in power that would take effect in short bursts. Going from second gear to sixth gear in a blink of an eye, 
Her stamina and enhancements allowed her body to fight this way. It was like an android version of Kaioken, converting all of her deadly stamina into small power surges. And she swoops in, blasts the floor, causing smoke to cloud the area, making it difficult for Vegeta to sense her cloaked android power. Vegeta sees a shadow approaching through the smoke and goes for a powerful right hook to defend himself. Super 18's power surges once again, using her new ability. She ducks him, and he was completely caught off guard by a sudden increase. She appears behind him and roundhouse kicks Vegeta's arm to everyone's shock breaking his arm in the process just like old times the injury never truly healed and Vegeta roars with the pain the flashback of all those years ago begin to fill his eyes with anger he greatly underestimated Super 18's power here and started wishing he had gone Super Saiyan 4 from the get-go he had enough of this an explosion of energy follows from Vegeta in the small space around him and Super 18 looks on in horror as she sees glowing red eyes of a primal beast unable to even comprehend the upcoming attack Vegeta emerges and pummels 18 with one thunderous hook to her jaw, knocking her right out of the ring. She was upgraded, yes, but she did not have the energy absorption ability like Super 17. The smoke clears and Vegeta had already powered down to base form before the crowd saw what happened. Standing as the victor with a broken arm, Vegeta wins by elimination. 18 comes around after getting almost knocked out cold by Vegeta's punch. She gets up and smiles, holding her jaw. Vegeta walks to the edge of the ring, holds out his hand, and she accepts. He pulls her up into the ring, and the two shake hands to the crowd applauding. I underestimated you, 18, and it literally cost me an arm and almost the match. She replies, it's a shame we had to square off this early in the tournament. I was hoping to at least make it the finals match. Since when have you been training so hard? Well, that wife of yours knows me better than you do. Better get that arm fixed up. You never know when you'll need to. She winks and walks away. And Vegeta blushes. So that's her secret! Krillin, you idiot! Why didn't he tell me about this sooner? Vegeta goes to the back to treat his arm and pass him by Bulla and Pan, who walk out next. He says good luck. And she replies, <laughs> Don't need it, Dad. Vegeta shakes his head, seeing the same hot-headed brat that he used to be in the old days. Pan looks extremely focused. Gohan shouts over to Vegeta. Hey, this one will be interesting, huh? Vegeta replies. That depends who's trained your kid. If Bulla stays focused, Pan is done for. Bulla asks Pan, all so confident. I take it you know Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, blah blah blah, right? But Pan smiles and says, Super Saiyan? Don't need it. Bulla also smiles and praises Pan. Well, finally, it's good to see someone else forging their own path of power. These old-timers don't understand all the power we need is right here in our normal state. They just haven't figured out how to channel it like I have. Pan replies, You mean, like both of us. Bulla says, Pan, I know we've been friends for a long time, but I'm not going to think twice about punching you in the face today. I need this. Pan also realizes the seriousness in Bulla's eyes. She truly had the ambition to be the best, and Pan accepts this, knowing it could get ugly, and says, I respect you, but today, your ass belongs to me. The two power up in base forms, and it shakes the arena, but then their auras fade to nothing, and a moment of silence graces the air. It was so quiet you could hear the birds tweet from a mile away. Their eyes open suddenly, and they engage in a close combat bout. They actually fight like martial artists. None of that over-the-top explosive key blast boom boom crap. They use actual fighting skills without flying, holds, throws, slams, pressure point hits. This is literally like Cobra Kai, but with far more power. The two would fight for nearly 10 minutes. They refrained from using any energy blasts, no power-ups. They had a warrior's pride, and they just wanted to fight each other to prove who was number one. A battle of attrition and guts. Bleeding, worn out, the two would struggle to stand in this extremely close battle. The crowd would look on in disbelief and started to want the fight to stop, believing they were trying to kill each other. It was no longer a martial arts fight. It was about who could make the other stop breathing first. Why were these girls so bloodthirsty and determined to win this? Vegeta and Gohan look at each other and nod. Having that respect for their daughter's battle as Saiyans, but knowing their safety is more important as Earthlings. They both stand up and call to end this fight in a draw. But Bulla shouts down to them, 
Don't you dare stop anything. And Pan also shouts back. Then let's end this right now. Pan powers up as high as her power could go, demonstrating an aura similar to Ultimate Gohan's mystical power-up. Vegeta was in shock that Pan was this strong, and Gohan and Videl just cannot believe how she got this strong. Who has she been training with? He and Gohan shield their eyes due to the scary amount of force from Pan. She was just in her base form, and her power was top tier. Bulla struggles to hold herself up on her feet due to the force, and she was pressured to respond with her own power. Bulla roars and clashes her power against Pan's aura. Their auras push back and forth. Bulla too had dormant power that was just as strong. Vegeta knew about Bullas due to their training sessions, and it would only surface if Bulla fought with passion and desire. Pan was her trigger, a childhood rival, and she didn't want to be second best. They both charge at each other with their strongest punch. This hit would be the deciding blow, and boom! A monstrous clash, resulting in a blast of bright, blinding energy. It phases out, and the two are found laying motionless on the arena floor where the referee begins to count. One, two, three, there's no movement. Four, five, six, Bulla's arm begins to twitch. Seven, eight, Pan still doesn't move. Nine, Bulla's arm raises and then falls back down. Ten, double KO. Vegeta, Bulma, Gohan, Vidal, they run up to help the girls, who would suffer extreme injuries. Vegeta and Gohan, both extremely worried, but at the same time, proud. They begin taking them to the back to heal the old-fashioned way. There are no more second chances like before. And as Pan and Bulla are being carried out, Bulla's eyes glance over to the unconscious Pan. She tries to reach out with her hand towards Pan in friendship, but falls unconscious in doing so. The respect in this rivalry was undeniable. There are no Senzu Beans, there are no Dragon Balls, there are no healers. Dende or any of the Kais or Gods no longer get involved in Earth's casual events anymore. They are no longer buddy buddies who hang around Capsule Corporation all day eating pudding. Gods and Kais do their damn job and stay away from mortal affairs. Dende would only get involved if the Earth was at risk, but not for tournaments. He's a goddamn guardian of Earth, not a goddamn lollipop lady. So Pan and Bulla as well as everyone else in this tournament, would have to endure aches and pains from fighting. This was their risk and choice now, a life of consequence. But this is only the beginning. Don't you dare miss the rest of this Budokai Tenkaichi next time on Dragon Ball Z. It's GT, you idiot! On the other side of the bracket, we find a surprise contestant in the tournament who was allowed to enter Earthrealm for 24 hours to participate in the tournament. Sorry, I meant the living world, not Earthrealm. This is a Mortal Kombat. Hey, this is a tournament after all. <laughs> Anyway, it was PyCon. Goku put out a little message to the other world, and PyCon won the exhibition there and got a chance to attend Earth for 24 hours. It had been a long time, and Goku was more than happy that his student Oob would get to fight it out against a much stronger PyCon, who was a great rival and friend to Goku in the other world. PyCon easily got through the qualifiers. He loved a good old fight. It would be a great test to see Oob's tactical ability within a tournament setting. PyCon was much stronger, but he wasn't Oob levels. However, Oob would take on PyCon with the intention of learning more about the art of combat from a veteran. The battle would begin and Oob would extend the battle for as long as possible, learning a variety of skills that PyCon was pulling off skills and tactics that would be very useful in future battles. Oob was a fast learner. It allowed him to test his martial arts combat against someone else other than Goku, and it paid off. Despite Pycon having a truly enjoyable bout against this warrior, Oob was able to learn from Pycon and utilize the first round as a great warm-up, and defeating Pycon via elimination in the spirit of martial arts. Oob truly had come a long way since the Shadow Dragon's arc, taking his training far more serious, with no room for mistakes, and honoring the teachings of his master Goku. After the battle, Pycon walks up to Goku. That's a great student you've got there. You've given me something to work towards, Goku. See you in the next one. They smile at each other, and Pycon walks off. Goku then nods at the victor Oob, realizing that Oob went into the fight to learn and grow, rather than just focus on winning and being really strong. One of the first teachings Master Roshi taught Goku and Krillin in their first tournament experience. And now, passing it on to his student. Roshi stands beside Goku. 
I see what you did there, Goku. <laughs> Roshi was honored that his student had learned from him and had become a master of his own. So far, this tournament truly was bringing back the incredible original nature of martial arts tournaments. Before everything got too flashy, fighters were showing their skills and passion more than brute power. Passion and love for the characters had finally been returned to storytelling. The next match was the fearsome Tien vs Mercenary Tao. Yes, he had returned. It was rumored he had died, but it was a decoy. Tao was alive and kicking, and he had some business to settle with Ten Shin Han. But Tien had moved on in life, become a more successful, honorable man over the years. He became a goddamn role model, whilst Tao lived in the past, consumed by hatred, jealousy, and revenge. The fight begins, and Tao tries to hit with Tien with all his death blows going for the kill, but he cannot hit Tien. It's almost like Tien had Ultra Instinct, but it's not Ultra Instinct. It's just raw talent that only a role model would know. Tien continues to dodge and tells Tao that he's got five seconds to eliminate himself or he will throw him out of the ring. But Tao continues to strike at Tien. He wants him dead. The anger in his face is apparent. The sweat dripping down his forehead. He had gone insane, but Tien had had enough. He grabs Tao's fist and says, move on. In fact, I'll give you a bump start. Two extra arms grow from Tien's body like Goro. He grabs both legs and arms of Tao, lifts him high above his head and launches him out of the entire arena into the mountains. Tien wins and walks off the stage with Goku saying, You made it look easy, Tien. I'm getting nostalgic thinking about our old matches. Thanks, Goku. I'd love to square off against you again one day, before this body gets too old. <laughs> The next match would be the most interesting of all. A masked warrior enters the stage along with Gohan. Nobody knows who this person is, and Gohan feels an odd presence. Familiar, but also very different. More raw. The two step into the ring and stare at each other, but Gohan cannot see under the white mask and black hood. The arena is silent in anticipation of what's going to happen, who this guy is. Gohan was confident in his training that he could take on pretty much all comers. But something was off with this one. There was something else at play. The masked warrior slowly removes his hood, and a familiar spiky black hairstyle shows itself. Everyone then takes a gasp, the realization that it's Goku. He secretly entered the tournament to test out the competition, including his son's training, to win the whole damn thing and make it Goku time once again. Gohan smiles a little. I knew something was up. Let's make this a good match, Dad. But out of nowhere... There is Goku, returning from the ice cream bar. Oh shoot, I missed the start of Gohan's fight. They didn't have any chocolate chips, so I had to sell for strawberry. And I brought you a mint one too, Goten. Hey guys, what's wrong? The masked warrior takes hold of the front of his mask and rips it from his face. Everyone is in shock. D dad But... Gohan looks behind him to the seating area and sees Goku scoff in his face with ice cream where everyone else are jaw dropped. And without a moment to breathe, Gohan gets clobbered with a monstrous blue energy blast that sends him backwards. He was caught off guard by this warrior who looks just like Goku. The imposter continues his assault. Gohan lands and gathers his balance, but is swept from his feet and then kicked closer to the ring edge. This guy was going straight for the elimination, taking full advantage of Gohan's distraction. The mind games had worked. Gohan was not going all out because he was in complete confusion of who this man was. But Gohan gets back up and tries to jump over the imposter, but the imposter saw it coming. Jumps up and launches another blue energy attack at Gohan, catching him fully in the face. And he kicks Gohan down and Gohan bounces right at the ring edge. He's inches away from being eliminated, but he gets up and realizes the seriousness that he's about to lose. He starts to focus his power, aiming to turn up the heat. But as he does, the imposter warrior shouts, you're not Kakarot's son! And Gohan appears in shock again. The mind games and surprises were distracting him. The imposter goes for the finishing punch to knock Gohan out of the ring. The punch hits! Or does it? Gohan had grabbed the fist, effortlessly, and his aura begins sizzling. The ultimate power of Gohan surfaces. Yes, even the bang comes back. The imposter backs off and lands in the center of the ring fully aware that his element of surprise had ran its course, knowing full well he cannot defeat Gohan now. The serious Gohan walks back to the center. Let's end this now. 
but the imposter turns his back on Gohan and walks off the stage. Everyone is in shock. The referee shouts, Gohan wins by elimination. The Goku lookalike looks up at the ring at Gohan. That's more like it. Thank your old mentor Piccolo for that strategy. He said if you fight Gohan, go for his weak point, his mind. I'd say he was almost right. But you're truly a great warrior, a true Saiyan. He walks towards the exit, and as he's passing the others in the crowd, there's one split moment where he makes sudden eye contact with Goku whilst passing by. They don't stop. They don't speak. He continues walking. But they both felt something. A bond. Goku knew that feeling. Even if it was a feeling from over 50 years ago. He knew. Kakarot! You need to follow that man right now! Vegeta seemed very adamant in this. It sounded like a Saiyan leader commanding his troop. Gohan walks down. Well, Dad, I thought I was about to fight you. Any idea who that was? Goku replies. You carry on with the tournament, son. I'll be back in a bit. I've got a feeling there's a lot more to this. Trunks asks. How can you be so sure, Goku? Then Super 17 steps in. Is it ever just a harmless one-off moment? There's always a bigger picture that leads to something crazy. Anyway, looks like I'm up next. Who is it I'm fighting again? That will be me, Hotshot, the Wolf Fang Optimist. And with a cheeky smile, Yamcha walks up beside 17 and then walk together to the ring. The most anticipated match in Dragon Ball history is about to commence. Five matches have been explosive in terms of exciting events, but this is only the beginning. Don't you dare miss the rest of this Budokai Tenkaichi next time on Dragon Ball Z. It's GT, you idiot! The fight of the century is about to begin. Super Android 17 versus Yamcha. As they're walking up the steps, 17 says, So you're THE Yamcha? I've heard so much about you, even in my memories as a single Android 17. I don't believe we've ever met, but I hope we can stay friends after this. Well, pal, I hope so too. I've been training hard for years, so hopefully it will be enough to beat the greatest Android in the world. Let the fight begin! Super 17 says, Enough games. You actually don't stand a hope in hell at defeating me. You know that. Yamcha immediately activates the multiform technique. There's about 20 different Yamchas. All right, Super Android 17, I want you to meet the Yam Champions. These are my fans from all around the world. And from the crowd, Tian says to the others, That's it, Yamcha. During our training together, we knew we'd never catch up with you all in raw power. So we focused fully on heightening the capabilities of the most basic and forgotten techniques to balance the playing field against you brutes. The advanced multiform is just the beginning of our bag of surprises. Super Sam Dean looks at the Yamchas. So what? 20 or 100? I'll swat you all like flies. Super 17 goes in for the hits and destroys nearly all of them in an instant. But none of them was the real Yamcha. And the moment he does, the clone pops into nothing, spawning four more. It's a multiply in multiform. Super 17 is extremely surprised. He has the power and speed, but in this tournament setting, this could be trouble. About 50 different Yam champions start charging up energy to their fingertips. Could this be the spirit ball? Super 17 standing in the center relaxes and begins to smile, knowing this energy is useless, as he will instantly absorb it. Spirit ball! 50 spirit balls launch towards Super 17, and just when 17 opens up to absorb them, Yamcha halts every single spirit ball and throws them directly above into the sky. 17 looks up in shock, and from all angles come 50 wolf fang fists, a direct hit to an open Super 17, who was expecting key, but all he got was a wolf's fury. One wolf fang fist after another, Super 17 is being pushed back, he's pushed a few meters and then responds with brute forced to clobber one Yam champion at a time on their approach. He caught onto this technique, but as he does, the 50 spirit balls begin dropping at a high speed towards Super 17 as he's defeating each Yam champion. He looks up, realizing it's energy he can absorb, but won't make the same mistake again to leave himself open. But Yamcha expected this, and just before the spirit ball hits 17, Yamcha detonates the energy, creating a mini shockwave that 17 cannot absorb, and instead feels slight force, where one wouldn't be sufficient, but 50 
50 exploding spirit balls in Super 17's face one after another, combined with a few more Yam Champion's Wolf Fang fists, the amount of distractions and knockbacks had almost pushed Super 17 out. And as he is on the ring edge, Yamcha blasts the floor around Super 17, causing him to lose his foot in and slip. An elimination is approaching! Or is it? A giant explosion surrounds 17, where all the remaining spirit balls and Yam champions fade away from the battlefield. Super 17's android barrier activates, and the bubble protects his body from touching the arena floor. Yamcha almost had the elimination. Or did he? Super 17 lands back down with his android barrier still activated. Yamcha doesn't want to give up, so begins charging his remaining energy for another secret technique. But 17 denies this, using a new special technique of his own. He launches his own barrier into Yamcha. Yamcha goes for the block, but the barrier passes through him until he's completely trapped inside it. Just like Goku vs. Freezer on Namek, trapped in the energy. 17 controls the bubble to be placed outside the arena floor. 17 commands the barrier to explode with a force come in from only above, which is enough force to smack Yamcha's body directly down into the grass. Yamcha is eliminated. What an underappreciated performance by Yamcha. The crowd is cheering Yamcha and Super 17. Huh, I did alright. Super 17 walks behind him. Yes, you did, sir. He shakes his hand. To tell the truth, I was given the heads up about your absorption technique. I thought I'd play into the hopes of you letting your guard down. I'd never stand a chance against you any other way. Super 17 smiles. Everything I heard about you was a lie. You're born and bred to be a fighter. Keep at it. This was the match of the day, surely. The next match was just as interesting as Oob vs Pycon, in that Legic had managed to find his way to Earth in hopes of facing Son Goku once again, as promised during the Black Star Dragon Ball Saga. Legic had been training intensely for the last three years, and was already strong enough back then to give Goku's base form a tough fight. What perfect way than to face him in a tournament setting, only to feel the disappointment that Goku didn't actually enter. But Legic wasn't at all disappointed, as he was facing Trunks, another familiar face from three years ago. Trunks and Legic enter the ring, and don't waste any time to get things started. You've come a long way just to lose in the first round. But Legic doesn't give any response, nor show any emotion. Trunks attacks and Legic dodges, only to begin a flurry of powerful hits which Trunks manages to block. Barely. Legic was going hard from the get-go, and Trunks responds by jumping up high and shooting a barrage of energy blasts at Legic. But he deflects each one into the sky, where they explode, aware that the crowd were nearby. He looks up at Trunks and tells him recklessness will not defeat him. So Trunks lands and says that's fine. He powers up to Super Saiyan and says, I'll just punch you out of the ring then. Legic smiles. That's it. That's the form I remember. The one I've been waiting for. Legic lost to Super Saiyan Goku years ago. But he trained so hard, and with a new variety of skills at his disposal, he was sure he would win this time. He creates a giant energy rope and manages to wrap Trunks up in it. It would squeeze Trunks with incredible force. Trunks cannot break free, so he raises his power even higher and transforms into a Super Saiyan 2. The electricity thunders through the rope, but it was hopeless. Legic's energy rope is far too tight and powerful, and it looked inevitable that Trunks would have to say, I give up or get crushed faster than Chi-Chi is an egg. Legic begins walking towards Trunks. Well, if you're not going to give up, I best throw you out of the ring. I don't want Saiyan blood on my hands today. Goten shouts from the crowd, Trunks, ghost his ass! Trunks remembers the training, and in an unbelievable turn of events, Trunks blows out a handful of Trunks ghosts. The super ghost kamikaze attack was back, and he didn't need any arms at all. But the rope was crushing Trunks, and Legic stood in his place, shocked at these spooky ghost trunks. Super ghost juggle of doom attack! The five ghosts begin a formation and charge at Legic, who doesn't know what the hell this is. The first one hits Legic, who thinks he's blocked. Kaboom! Knock back! Serious damage. The second one hits Legic from underneath. Kaboom! Legic is airborne and severely winded. They go in for some Tekken level juggle shit right now. Two more attack. Boom! Kaboom! Both knock Legic back and Legic is on his knees in serious pain on the ring edge. The destructive force from these ghosts, it was no joke. And the final ghost appears right next to him in a chokehold position with its hands an inch away from Legic's throat so it doesn't destruct. The ghost threatens Legic. Surrender, oh boob boob! Legic looks at Trunks, who is still being crushed by the rope, but is back to base form and almost passed out. It's either Legic surrenders or Trunks does first, but the brave warrior shows no signs of giving up. He would rather pass out and die than give up. 
the memory of his father Vegeta sacrificing himself all those years ago against Boo stuck with him. Trunks was as brave as his father, and Legic looks at the ghost. Well, boom boom it is. Wait, you got me. I surrender. Legic cancels the rope and the referee shouts, Legic has given up! The winner is Trunks! Who is basically out cold at this point. There's no way the ref would have counted to 10 before the ghost blew Legic up and out of the ring. And Legic knew this. Trunks comes back to his senses and is held up by Legic. Close one, huh? <laughs> yeah, I thought your trick was going to outlast mine for a moment. Wait, where's the last ghost? I don't know, he just flew off, I think. But around the corner, the ghost can be seen at the ice cream bar, orders bubblegum flavored ice cream, goes to eat it, and kaboom! The ice cream bar is sent to the next dimension. Up next, it's Krillin vs. Goten. Is this actually happening? Yes it is. It's Krillin's official retirement match, and as they approach the ring, Vegeta shouts, Krillin, why didn't you tell me about Android 18? And 18 says, say another word out loud and I'll break your other arm. Krillin says to Goten, hey bud, wanna make a deal and say no Super Saiyan? Goten, with a smile on his face as always, says, sure Mr. Krillin. And he was serious, he had respect for Krillin. Just how rusty was Krillin, a guy who had lived in peaceful times for many years, had completely given up training. He wasn't pressured into this by 18, this was a match he wanted to have. Why all of a sudden? But what better way to end it than against the son of his best friend? Alright, here I come Krillin. Goten charges at Krillin. But oh! An after image! Krillin vanishes! What? Surely Goten can detect this guy. No he can't! Multiple after images, one after another, the Goten hits away. Krillin has suppressed his power so far down low that Goten couldn't rely on his senses to find Krillin amongst the crowd. Using his far inferior power level to his advantage, the levels of power had gotten so high over the years that these behemoths would struggle to sense very small powers during combat. Krillin uses the solar flare on Goten and a direct hit! Goten is disabled for a moment. Krillin doesn't waste any time, fires at multiple destructive discs, slices away at the arena floor under Goten, causing him to fall but he can feel the fall and flies up instead. Very clever. Krillin destroys the discs. He doesn't want to kill Goten exactly. Goten's sight is back and he catches onto Krillin's cunning techniques. He responds with raw power and speed, which completely decimates Krillin, hitting him down hard into the ground. Sounded like bones cracking on the poor guy. 18 gasps, believing Krillin is hurt. Krillin cries in agony. Goten asks, Mr. Krillin, are, are you alright? Let's stop this match, okay? But Krillin stands up. N no! He charges a Goten and tries to hit him, but he can't. Krillin tries utilizing some old school martial arts moves, but Goten responds with sheer power and clobbers Krillin down again. He just can't keep this up. Goten loosens up. Please, Mr. Krillin, no more. The crowd is speechless. Seeing this old guy get up one more time? You're gonna have to do better than that. You're Goku's son, aren't you? <laughs> then prove it! Goten blocks Krillin, punches Krillin very hard in the chest, and Krillin coughs up blood, landing on the floor once again. 18 shouts, Krillin, no! Stop the fight! But Krillin shouts, 18, no! Uh, this is my fight! Krillin begins to power up. The power is nothing to Goten, who is still in his base form. But suddenly, Krillin does something nobody has ever seen before. The power fades to nothing, and Krillin closes his eyes. Despite all of the pain his body is in, Krillin's aura goes inward towards him, and he takes a deep breath. Master Roshi's sunglasses glare, and notices something had changed in Krillin. Krillin is just standing in the middle of the ring without moving. Goten is puzzled. He didn't want to hurt Krillin, but knows the match has to end right now. Trunks shouts up, He put up a good fight, Goten! Just go Super Saiyan and end it with one blow! Goten nods, and transforms into a Super Saiyan. Sorry, Mr. Krillin. I've got places to be today. A direct hit to Krillin's nose! Or is it? No! Krillin had moved his head at the last second. What? This is Super Saiyan Goten! How did he dodge that? Goten is very, very surprised, and tries a combo of punches and kicks, and Krillin dodges every single one of them. How the- What is this? Krillin is moving in an essence of tranquility, and Master Roshi smiles, as Goku walks back into the arena from his mother's meeting. <laughs> Take a look at Krillin, Goku! Goku is in shock. Goten is far more powerful by a long shot, but Krillin is able to keep up by staying focused. <laughs> <laughs> Not just staying focused, Krillin has completely emptied his mind. My only worry is how long our boy Krillin can keep this up for. Goten finally hits a super strong kick on Krillin's head and kicks him flying out of the ring into and through the wall of the backstage area. 
And there it is. Krillin is eliminated. Goten wins. Goku goes and helps Krillin up. Hey, buddy, you fought amazing. What was that? Can you teach me? Krillin says, what? Did, did I do something? My, my mind's gone blank, Goku. Master Roshi says, It's old age, Krillin. It's expected. Goten runs down. Mr. Krillin, are you okay? You turned up the heat so I had to respond. You still got it, sir. Krillin says, Well, this was meant to be my retirement match, Goten. And yeah, I ain't gonna fight officially anymore, but thanks to you, Goten, I'm going to keep improving myself. Master Roshi, if it's okay with you, I'd like to visit you again for some training. <laughs> Bring 18. She still needs a few more upgrades. <laughs> 18 clobbers Roshi from behind. Yeah! The tournament is heating up into the quarterfinals. Don't you dare miss the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. GT! God damn it, Nappa! We are now in the quarterfinals of the 31st Budokai Tenkaichi. The one-armed Vegeta automatically advances to the semi-finals due to Pan and Bulla both being eliminated from a double KO, which brings us to 17 versus Gohan. This is a big one. Oddly, while standing in the ring together, a downpour occurs. Was this a coincidence? Gohan fighting an android in the rain? 17 says, Don't think I'm just a one-trick pony waiting to absorb energy, young man. Gohan raises an eyebrow. What do you mean? A punch to the face! What lightning speed! If anything, he moved faster than Super Android 18 with her NOS activated. Gohan levels out. What the? Super 17 from behind. Double axe handle to Gohan, who lands back to the center of the ring. He takes a deep breath as Super 17 homes in, and Gohan's aura ignites. The ultimate power returns. Such incredible power, there was no doubt about it. Gohan tried his best not to resort to energy blasts. Despite him being a sharp focused warrior with no distractions and his raw power being formidable, his agility just couldn't keep up with Super 17. He was too damn fast. And the worrying thing was Super 17 could still get stronger if Gohan unleashed his key, which he tried so hard not to do. Gohan was taking a lot of damage from Super 17's multitude of hits. It wasn't the force of the hits, it was the quantity of them that started to sting. This android could very well win the whole damn thing. The rain continues to pour. Gohan hit down again and again, and Super 17 remains high in the sky, looking at absolutely dominant. Gohan knew he had to end this as soon as possible, but how? The ultimate form is enough damage, but he just can't hit him. Gohan starts to think and realizes it could be extremely dangerous for both him and Super 17. Was this tournament worth the risk? Of course it was. This is Dragon Ball. Super 17 declares this is the end, and Gohan takes the stance. Kame! Kame! Super 17 laughs, like father, like son. He charges down towards Gohan, but Gohan responds by launching himself upwards with the Kamehameha still charging. Super 17 does the freaky laugh, knowing he's either going to smash Gohan down or going to get a huge power up from the Kamehameha. He even starts to dribble. But Gohan starts concentrating the Kamehameha and condensing it into his fist. What is this? The energy has been completely integrated with Gohan's fighting force and can no longer be absorbed by Samadine. A familiar sight, like father like son indeed. The roar of an Uzaru can be heard and Super Samadine cannot dodge this in time. The crouching Gohan rising monkey Uzaru fist. It hits Super 17 directly on his chest, where Gohan purposely concentrated his energy to smash rather than pierce 17 so it doesn't kill him. It was 100% impact. Super 17 gets completely knocked out from the pain of the impact and hit flying away into the city to the ground, where the officials quickly fly over to confirm out of bounds and KO'd. Gohan wins by combining the ultimate form, the Kamehameha and the Uzaru, the ultimate nod to the good old days. And the sun rays begin to beam through the clouds. The day started to brighten up, but suddenly, Super 17 flies back over and stares at Gohan. How about we take this to the wasteland and finish what we started, boy? Gohan enters a stance to defend himself. Super 17 looked incredibly irate, and the crowd started to get startled. <laughs> Lighten up, would you? I'm just kidding. Good fight, Gohan. And like your old man, Thanks for deciding last minute not to end my goddamn life. Gohan laughs. I'm sure there was a desperate reason back then though. But you're a good guy now though, 17. Super 17 laughs. I'm not a good guy. Get it right. I'm still a bad guy. I'm just respecting the rules for a little while. Good luck against Vegeta. Don't hold back on him like you did against me. I know what you're hiding. The next match. The most respectful match of them all. Tien versus Oob. Tien breathes deeply, knowing this is the end of the road. He stares at Oob, who stands before him. Oob, 
your Goku's student, and from what I've heard, you even make him struggle to keep up. Ub replies, Sir, Master Goku has the most amazing praise for you, and said I can learn from you. I can't wait to fight with you. I'd like to refer to you as Master Tien. But Tien replies, You're a good-hearted young man, but nothing would be more respectful and honorable to me than you going all out and ending this without the fluff. We both know I can't handle you. It would be disrespectful for a tiger to play around with a helpless old dog like me. Ub looks down sad, but then puts on his game face. As you wish, Master Tien. Ub uses instant transmission, appears behind Tien, and karate chops him to the back of the neck, knocking the role model out cold. Tien has been defeated! Ub wins! The crowd cannot believe it was over that fast. Master Tien, wake up. I did what you asked. Master Tien. No response. Tien's body goes poof. The Shadow Clone Jutsu. From high in the sky, Oob senses an incredible power revealing itself. Kiko Ho! The tri beam engulfs the entire arena, the fighting arena, not the crowd, with nowhere to go, and it thuds Oob into the ground. What a goddamn role model. It wasn't even Tien that walked into the match, it was his clone all along. In fact, the real Tien hadn't even been at the tournament. He'd been at the bar, having a strawberry mojito, and was waiting patiently from afar for this moment to get a huge upper hand. And his clone defeated Tao earlier. What an incredible advanced multi-form technique. What a goddamn role model. Oob is stunned from that unexpected hit. His laid-back attitude cost him greatly there, and sometimes one mistake is all it takes. Tien lands back down and pressing on with a number of attacks to keep Oob from recovering. Your kindness is what will let you down and get you killed in battle. I knew Goku wouldn't teach you how to get over that. Despite Oob being insanely above Tien in physical power and speed, Tien was already five moves ahead in his mind with an arsenal of deceptive moves where Oob couldn't lock onto Tien that easily. It was like fighting a ninja. In fact, Tien had incorporated ninjutsu into his key attacks. He truly had balanced the playing field with technical abilities, and he was showing Oob no mercy, no time to breathe. Always give everything you have, and never think you've already won. The words would rattle Oob's cranium as Tien continues his assault to wear Oob down. One more punch to the jaw, but this was the one. The punch that woke Oob up entirely from his relaxed soul. Within an instant, Oob reverses the situation by focusing more of his power and looking at Tien as a high-level threat. No more being overconfident. No more underestimating the opponent. Just because he was Goku's student, it doesn't mean anything in the real world or against other opponents. Goku showed Oob the door. Now he has to walk through it himself on the battlefield. The five-year training after the 28th Budokai Tenkaichi was just the basics, but the last two years were more advanced lessons, and this fight with Tien was no doubt an advanced lesson to not just being a powerful fighter, but being a great fighter. Finally overriding Tien's deceptive techniques by learning the patterns and decimating him with precise attacks that countered those crafty techniques. Oob was learning fast, and he pummels Tien until Tien couldn't stand no more. Oob wins by attrition. The respect is given from student to another master. Thank you, Master Ten Shinhan. Master Goku was right all along. You truly are a fighting genius, and I am grateful for your teachings. Tien gives the thumbs up. Good work, Oob. You're everything I expected. I'm sure one day you'll be a role model yourself. Now make me and Goku proud by winning this tournament. Yes, sir. And now, we arrive to Goten versus Trunks. The last time these two squared off against each other in tournament setting was during the junior division of the 25th Budokai Tenkaichi. But now the boys have become men. The fruits of training from next generation warriors will finally be showcased to the fullest potential. The son of Goku, the son of Vegeta, this match is going to blow all other matches out of the water. The crowd was super excited. Trunks walks over to Goten in the middle of the ring. Wait, he's whispering to Goten? What's he saying? This is supposed to be a fight, not a Capsule Corporation boardroom meeting. They continue talking, and the ref approaches Trunks. Uh, Mr. President, you may proceed to fight at any time. Wait. That stance. That pose. Those words. Fusion! Ha! Good God almighty, it's Gotenks! Gotenks is here, but why? What's the meaning of this? The ref looks confused and meets with the other officials. They have a mother's meeting. Gotenks is standing there in the middle of the ring with his arms folded with a powerful base form aura. The ref says, Due to Gotenks being both Trunks and Goten, neither of them have been truly eliminated, but both have technically won by being the sole survivor. Therefore, Gotenks proceeds to the semi-finals to fight Oob. 
We are at the semi-finals and the ending is drawing near, but obstacles still remain. For Oob, it's Gotenks. Goku says, oh man, using the very technique I taught them. Hey Oob, this is going to be a real test. Try not to think of it as cheating, just an opportunity to get stronger. Experience is what's important here in this tournament. Master Roshi nods. Vegeta says, this is expected of the boys. They may have been training hard, but there's no doubt they'd pull off fusion in times of need. Oob must be that reason. You should feel flattered, kid. Oob doesn't feel too confident. He's seen fusion in action and knows how destructive it is. Gotenks taunts Oob. You, you going to come up to the ring or are you going, going to cry to your mummy? mummy? Oob becomes slightly annoyed but quickly regains composure and thinks to himself, Gotenks is all about the mind games. I need to get past that. Oob enters the shattered arena ring. It's been one hell of a day. Gotenks is just there, mocking him. Let the fight begin! The fight begins and Gotenks would want to show off in base form for as long as possible. This was the glory in front of a crowd that he always wanted ever since the days of fighting Super Buu. He showboats a ton of new attacks. This was a very tricky fighter unlike the others. After learning from Master Tien, Oob's reflexes and battle awareness had grown in dealing with tricky situations and he used this to his advantage. Oob eventually manages to knock Gotenks on his ass by raising his game, to which Gotenks shows off by transforming into a Super Saiyan. And so the intensity continues to skyrocket, the two not showing any signs of giving up. Right now, Super Saiyan Gotenks could solo the Shadow Dragons, all except Omega Shenron. That was until Gotenks decided to pull out his trump card, Super Saiyan 3. This would be the greatest level of power sensed in the tournament at this point, perhaps even slightly above Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, if that was Vegeta's full power of Super Saiyan 4 earlier on. Either way, it was clear. Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks would begin obliterating Oob. Gotenks would use his whole bag of tricks, galactic donuts, Super Ghost Kamikaze attacks, but Oob would do his best in powering through the traps and damage at the expense of his body. He was in serious pain. The only way he was keeping up was through using instant transmission. But even then, Gotenks would eventually work his way through it and beat down on Oob. Oob was using the Kaioken technique to enhance his physical prowess. But in the end, it would only be enough to endure the punishment of Gotenks' monstrous assault. Gotenks tries his efforts to eliminate Oob through a variety of throws and attacks. But Oob was shown an incredible bounce back ability to stay in the ring. In fact, it would start to annoy Gotenks. The boy keeps standing back up looking back on all his previous failures and weaknesses in life. He was not going to let Master Goku and his family down again. If he was this so-called prodigy, then he wanted to prove it somehow. He always had trouble believing in himself, living up to the prodigy expectation. He was just a human fighter who learned techniques from his Master Goku, but deep down, he had the spirit of Majin Buu who merged with him whilst fighting Baby Vegeta. And it was this bond that provided Oob with an unnatural ability to endure and keep fighting, and just endure the punishment from this hyped up Saiyan who had become hot-headed with his own power. No longer wanted to go for an elimination, he wanted to prove his Super Saiyan 3 fusion was the ultimate power in this tournament, and prepares for a gigantic mouth blast to fire at Oob. But oh! The fusion separates, of course! Super Saiyan 3 takes up far more fusion time, but Goten and Trunks weren't 100% going into the fusion to begin with. They overestimated their power, and now their master plan to win this tournament, and all the glory, it's in trouble. But Oob is not in any good condition himself. In fact, even though he's endured the wrath of Gotenks, he can barely get up off his knees. Goten and Trunks look at each other and nod with a smile. They think they can eliminate the weakened Oob just through attrition now. Yamcha shouts, hey, Hey ref, how's the match still allowed to continue is beyond me. It's two versus one now. Goku smiles. Oob's got this. In a panic, the boys charge at Oob to gang up on him and eliminate him. But a voice can be heard inside Oob's head. It makes him stand up in anger like he's possessed. And Oob shouts out. She is! You take a chocolate! And oh my, the candy beam hits Goten and Trunks. They've become chocolate. And Oob, without hesitation, eats them both. What the hell happened? The crowd are in shock. Goku says, See, I told you, Oob's got this. Kakarot, he just ate our goddamn sons! Oob walks up to the crowd. It's alright, they're both hanging out in the two pods inside me. They're awake and we'll be back later. I thought their techniques will be useful for the finals. From inside, Goten and Trunks are shouting, Oob, no, let us out right now! And they start arguing with each other. This is your fault, Goten! No, this is your fault, Trunks! Oob says, I promise to buy you guys dinner later, just chill there for a while. In a confusing turn of events, the ref shouts, Whatever the hell just happened, 
Oob is the victor, and he proceeds to the finals. The truth was, the power of Boo would sometimes awake during battles at random times, allowing Oob to make use of the cunning mind and the majestic way of fighting of Boo. He never really learned how to utilize it fully. Boo chooses when to, if not sleeping, to get involved, which basically revitalizes Oob, similar to Naruto and the Ninetale Fox. However, Boo had done his duty, and he went back to sleep, so Oob only had a little bit of energy from Goten and Trunks to use in the finals. Just what can we expect from Vegeta vs Gohan? This is a battle of beastly powers. It will literally come down to the last punch. Talking about punches, Vegeta still had use of only one arm, but Vegeta was experienced enough to fight that way. But against the power of Ultimate Gohan, who still had a lot left in the tank, could he pull this off? Vegeta stands before Gohan. I entered this tournament to test the next generation, to see if they can live up to the task of protecting Earth when me and Kakarot aren't around. After us, it's you, Gohan. So let's find out if you can take on this. Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan 4 and revs the monkey power to maximum. Gohan says, Unbelievable! So this is the full power of your Super Saiyan 4, huh? You're way stronger than you were against Omega Shenron. This is your test, Gohan. Let's see your dormant power in full. Gohan powers up. His ultimate power is abnormally high, and the two lock horns instantly. And even with one arm, Super Saiyan 4 shows clear dominance over Gohan's ultimate power. If the battle continued this way, Gohan would surely lose. Both land back down, Vegeta standing triumphant from that encounter. No amount of skill you've seen in the tournament will work on me, Gohan. This is Super Saiyan 4, not your next martial arts belt level. What hope do you have against enemies stronger than me and your father? Gohan powers down. Well, if I can't win this with my own path of power, I guess it's over. You're giving up just like that. No, what I meant was, if I can't beat you using my own power as an Earthling, then I'll beat you with my power as a Saiyan. Vegeta looked puzzled, and out from Gohan's gi pokes the concealed tail. Gohan had a tail tucked away this whole goddamn time. The crowd are in shock, and Videl says with a wink, You think I didn't know about his tail? Come on now, we share the same bed. So you were holding back this entire time. Gohan proceeds with a power-up. I didn't think it would come to this, Vegeta. I was so sure of my Earthling power. But it looks like I'm about to join the Super Saiyan 4 bargain sale. And with a monstrous power-up to everyone's shock, Gohan transforms into a Super Saiyan 4. This isn't your first time, then. You didn't become Uzaru. Yeah, that's right. You see, I'm really good friends with the Supreme Kai, and before he and the other gods decided to take a step back, I requested a final training session to become as strong as my dad. I knew if he and you could become Super Saiyan 4s, then I could too. I always wanted to train my own way, Vegeta, but it never hurts to have an extra move in your back pocket, right? Impressive! So let me guess, you regained your tail naturally, and in turn you learned how to harness the full power of Super Saiyan 4 without any drawbacks. Boom! A punch to Vegeta's abdomen. Vegeta coughs out blood. What the hell? <laughs> Gohan looks down on Vegeta. Not all drawbacks. Gohan smashes Vegeta down to the ground with a huge Jin Kazama axe kick. The Saiyan is seriously stunned from this hit. Gohan says, The only drawback is that, because I'm normally a chilled guy, when I enter this form, it truly whetens my appetite for war. Gohan stomps onto Vegeta's body, and a huge explosion follows. Surely that shattered Vegeta's spine. Vegeta climbs out of the crate that's still holding his arm. I see the Super Saiyan 4 is controlling you more than you're controlling it. Because you've continued training your ultimate power, you haven't had enough time to adapt to that primal state of mind. For me and your father, it comes natural to us. Perhaps because we have full-blooded Saiyans at the core. So whether you're a Saiyan or an Earthling, never forget who you really are. Vegeta powers up with one arm. This was literally a battle of raw power versus raw power. Ape versus ape. The two collide, and it's the ultimate battle. It is a war of two different generations of Saiyans. Vegeta, who'd completely mastered the Super Saiyan 4 form, but Gohan, who had more dormant Super Saiyan 4 power. However, something was just off with him. He wasn't at balance at all. The two take to the sky and engage in an aerial assault. A one-armed Gallic gun clashing with a Kamehameha. Big bang attack into the Masenko. Another shockwave. This was extremely dangerous. Both realized the destructive nature of their power, and they land back down into the ring to continue the brutal skirmish. It was clear, Gohan's raw power outclassed Vegeta, and with an extra arm advantage. 
makes a change for Gohan. Vegeta was running on his experience and tenacity, but there's only so much he can give. Vegeta wanted to push Gohan to the absolute limit and to prove to himself that the next generation fighters are the reliable future, the peacekeepers that hold the potential to go even further beyond. But in doing so with all that power, they should never forget who they truly are. And so he did. Through the punches to one another, Vegeta's message was clear. He was no longer in the fighting business for himself. Vegeta had changed. He'd moved on a true representation of character development. The ultimate cold Saiyan prince, now a warm-hearted father and husband and friend. A friend of Gohan's. The former Saiyan prince goes out in a blaze of glory until the very last punch where he cannot fight anymore. He falls and Gohan is the winner. A heavily damaged Gohan that took the best of Vegeta. Goku was impressed by this battle, couldn't believe how powerful his son had become. But Gohan never wanted to train or fight like a Saiyan, especially with Super Saiyan 4. And through his battle, Vegeta had taught him to always be himself. And for Gohan, it was an Earthling. That power, no matter if it's Super Saiyan 4 or anything else, if it doesn't sync with who you really are, then you'll be lost in the path of life. Realizing this, Gohan takes a deep breath and quenches the bloodthirsty appetite for destruction in the Super Saiyan 4 form. Super Saiyan 4 disappears. He smiles. Thank you, Vegeta. I may embrace being an Earthling, but I can't deny I'm also a Saiyan. But maybe one day, I'll learn to balance the power of both. Vegeta shakes his hand. Me and your father can always count on you, Gohan. You're a great man, but I couldn't let you enter the finals with an advantage over the weakened Oob. If you truly want to be the champion here today, You'll win fair and square. Goku and the others give support to both Gohan and U before they enter the ring, knowing this is a final of two great warriors and men. Goku had no bias. One was his son, the other was his student. He knew both would benefit from this battle and both would come out even better. Win, lose or draw, the outcome did not matter as long as they kept improving. But it mattered to Gohan and Oob. They were in a totally different frame of mind than the others. This tournament meant everything to their development as warriors. Looking at their history of being fighters, rises and falls. This was the moment where they could both prove to themselves just how far they've come. So winning this fight meant to overcome the opponent. And that would be both their greatest challenges yet, especially in their condition. Both the damaged fighters enter the ring and the referee says, Contestants, there is a new rule for this year's Budokai Tenkaichi. The only way to win is to be the last man standing. Your opponent must not be able to answer the 10 count. So the out of bounds rule is scrapped. The only way to win this match is to have the strongest mind, body and spirit. All right, Oob, it's time. No chit chat, Gohan powers up to his ultimate form and still showed a ferocious amount of power despite being worn down. Oob takes stands, knowing that he doesn't have the required power left to deal with Gohan blow for blow. That would be pointless. So he begins drawing out the techniques of Goten and Trunks, who each learned the arsenal of Gotenks. Oob had advanced his chocolate beam. He can choose whether to digest it or retain them in pods inside to use their power. Oob creates the Super Oob Kamikaze Ghost right off the bat, and Gohan starts laughing. That old prank... I know everything about it. I thought I was fighting Oob, not my brother. The ghost attacks and chases Gohan whilst Oob begins preparing another move. He uses different techniques of Gotenks, all of which Gohan avoid and destroys the ghost and closes in on Oob, beating him far worse than he felt. Oob is knocked down and he creates two more ghosts to which he attempts the same attack pattern once again. Gohan avoids it yet again and pummels Oob even more. And once again, Oob gets up and repeats it, but this time with three ghosts. Gohan says, you can't be that stupid, Oob. Fine. This one will end you. The three ghosts attack Gohan and Oob knows the ghost cannot physically catch Gohan. But this time, the three ghosts utilize three different moves at the same time, combining it with his own techniques. One uses the solar flare, blinding Gohan, and the other one uses instant transmission and attaches himself to Gohan. Explodes. Serious damage. The third one then uses the galactic donuts on the falling Gohan, traps him, and he's in serious pain tangled up on the ground. The two remaining ghosts go to Oob's side. Oob lured Gohan into a false sense of security. Gohan relied on his prediction of Oob's attack and he failed. A clever way to reduce the potential of a superior fighter in power is by pretending you're an idiot. Oob walks up to Gohan, who is caught in a donut. Do you like these moves, Gohan? I guess you can call me Oob Tanks. Gohan gets up onto his knees, still tied up, his sight coming back. Oob says, two ghosts left, and you've got nowhere to go, scholar. Was this an Oob heel turn? This sounds very much like Gohan versus Bootanks. Gohan says, you're only winning because you're using somebody else's power and moves. I thought my dad trained you better than that. Such fire from Gohan's mouth. 
This was getting heated. Oob replies, Not at all, Gohan. This is my own technique. I regained it after me and Boo became one. Our true self. Aren't you the same guy that uses the Kamehameha and a bunch of other techniques learned from other masters? You sound like a sore loser right now. Gohan gets angry. Why you? Oob was getting under Gohan's skin. He was using the obnoxious taunting of Goten and Trunks to rile up Gohan. But why? What was Oob's purpose here? There's no way you'll survive the next attack, so say you surrender and quit complaining. I thought Goten looked up to you as his hero, but you're just a wimpy crybaby like you've always been. Gohan is pissed and says, I'm not losing this fight. A gigantic aura ignites around Gohan, causing Oob to be blown backwards. The two ghosts crash into each other. Gohan was going for it. No more games. No more honorable pathways to power. He was going for Super Saiyan 4 one last time to end this final match with a bang. Even if it turned him into a bloodthirsty warrior. A gigantic Uzaru roar can be heard. And Gohan's power breaks out of the Galactic Donuts finally. This was going to be the end for Oob. Oob had no more cards to play. Super Saiyan 4 Gohan stands to all ready for war, and Oob is just... Wait, where is Oob? No, it cannot be. Oob is directly behind Super Saiyan 4 Gohan, and he's got hold of his tail. No, wait. In one blitzing karate chop attack, he cuts off Gohan's tail. This is completely unexpected. Definitely an Oob heel turn. This is not how the story should be going. No one ever interferes with transformations. Everyone is supposed to stand opposite and allow the fighter to charge up and find his feet, right? Absolutely not. Oob's plan all along was to push Gohan to get desperate and bring out Super Saiyan 4 against his will. And he knew using Goten and Trunks' attitude would do just that. Getting into Gohan's head just like he saw the Masked Warrior do earlier. But not only that, he wanted to make Gohan waste a ton of energy making the transformation into Super Saiyan 4. Transforming takes a slice of energy in itself and Oob just rendered it all useless, bringing Gohan's stamina down a lot. But how did he swipe the tail so easily? Simple. He learned it from Master Goku. The only way to securely beat Super Saiyan 4 is to not let Super Saiyan 4 happen at all. Super Saiyan 4 had a weakness that when the user transforms, the tail is left open. Arrogantly, because the primal blood is bubbling for the upcoming fight, the Saiyan gets too caught up in that feeling. That's when to move in quickly undetected. And Oob had practiced this a lot, as you can imagine. Gohan returns to normal, but he kicks Oob away very hard, and Oob struggles to get back up. If Gohan didn't go Super Saiyan 4, he would have survived the two ghost explosions and won through attrition because Oob had hardly any power left after that speedy stunt. He can't even create another ghost right now. Pretty good, Oob. You're a lot smarter than I give you credit for, but now I know what you're hiding. You've got nothing left! Oob's eyes open in fear. Gohan flies in and punches Oob right in the face. Then he punches his guts extremely hard. Blood comes out of his mouth. He grabs Oob's arm, throws him into the ground, and Oob's winded. He tries to get up, but Gohan puts him in a Boston Crab, relentlessly trying to make Oob give up. But that wasn't going to be enough. You can't win that way. Oob continues to scream in pain. The crowd are in shock from this brutality. Could it get any worse? Yes, it was going to go a step further. Gohan breaks the leg of Oob. The scream shatters the sound barrier. He literally broke the goddamn leg of Oob. Oob rolls around in agony, almost passing out from the pain. Gohan says, start counting, ref. This scrub is done. What the hell? Is this a double turn? Is Oob now the face and Gohan turns heel? What a match. The ref begins counting, but Oob gets to his feet. I mean, foot at the count of seven. Gohan stands tall, but he can no longer use his ultimate power. Oob starts to perform a one-legged Kamehameha and launches his remaining power at Gohan, the last drop of power he had, wherever he dug it from. And Gohan responds in record time with a Kamehameha of his own, and the two have a beam struggle for a moment. Pointless, Oob. I've known this move longer than you, and it's not something I'll ever lose at. Ha! A spark of lightning surrounds Gohan for one second. The Super Saiyan 2 form shows itself as Gohan's beam overpowers Oob. A throwback to the Cell games and it smashes into Oob. His back crashes into the wall of the arena and he lands face down out of bounds in serious pain. Gohan returns to base form. That was almost all of his power as well, but it's not over yet. Oob's struggling to get up. The ref counts to nine. And Oob is on the grass, hanging onto the arena edge. He's up on his foot again, climbs back into the ring. Gohan is flabbergasted by Oob's toughness and says, I've got just enough power to break your other leg. Don't make me do it, Oob. Just lay down. Oob says nothing. One eye closed, battered, bruised, bleeding from his mouth. Gohan boldly states, so be it, prodigy. 
He bolts in and grabs Oob's other leg, takes him to the sky with one arm, and slams him back down to the arena floor, just like another Gohan from a future timeline. Oob's spine shatters on the ground from the impact, and Gohan lands back down but on one knee to catch his breath, but he rises back up, showing his own toughness. There is no end to me. No end. He walks over to Oob, who is spitting out more blood and cannot move. He grabs Oob's other leg without any hesitation. He breaks his kneecap. Oob is completely unable to stand, screaming in more pain. Goku cannot believe this. Gohan, what are you doing? That's enough, boys. Oh, man, this has gotten out of hand. I'm going in there right now to end this. But Vegeta says, Kakarot, no. Gohan isn't going to kill Oob. If you go in there right now, you will disgrace them both, especially your student. This is his whole life. He's been through failure after failure. He's doing this to prove himself to everyone, including you. And Gohan is the ultimate test. The best there is right now. And this is their choice. He won't be able to live with himself if he doesn't see this through to the end. Believe in your teachings, Kakarot. The end is near. Vegeta ends his glorious speech by looking up to the sky. And this is truly the end for Goku's student in this tournament. A tournament that started off with respect, but now it's turned into a bloodlusted obsession to win the title. The ref begins counting. Oob is not getting up from this. Gohan stands there, sure this was his victory. But as the ref counts to six, something starts approaching from the sky. Oh my god, believe in your teachings indeed, Kakarot. The Spirit Bomb is coming! Oob had created the Spirit Bomb during this match. After being constantly torn apart limb from limb by Gohan, enduring all this pain, Oob's concentration to form a Spirit Bomb during this time took an incredible amount of fortitude. The bomb wasn't big at all, actually the size of a ball, but that damn sure was enough in this situation against a Gohan with nothing left and would certainly render him out cold for a 10 count. Gohan's in complete shock, and as it's approaching him, he remembers back to the days where his father told him he could bounce it back because he had a pure soul. Oh no, this is trouble. Gohan has caught on. He plans on bouncing this straight into Oob. Gohan deflects the spirit bomb, and as the spirit bomb is traveling towards Oob, out of nowhere, the flying Nimbus swoops in, lifts Oob up, just enough so he can move his arms and deflect the spirit bomb back towards Gohan. Gohan hadn't repositioned after hitting the bomb, it's too fast. He cannot move out of the way. The spirit bomb crashes into Gohan. An explosion! Gohan is down! Oob is being held up thanks to the Nimbus Cloud's assistance that he called for. His toes barely touching the floor, but it classes up on his feet. Gohan cannot move. He cannot make the 10 count. It's over. Oob is the winner of the 31st Budokai Tenkaichi and the new world champion. What a glorious finish in respect to his master, Son Goku. Everyone are cheering from the most exciting battle in Dragon Ball history. Vegeta pats Kakarot on the back. Good job, old friend. You can take Trunks to the training grounds with you next week. The spirit of Boo talks to Oob from within. Boo could help you, but wanted you to do it yourself. You make Hercule proud, new champion. Gohan is still down and able to move, but suddenly, Kai Kai! There is Kabito Kai, and he's brought Dende with him, who both hadn't been seen for years. Gohan looks up slightly. Ah, I must be dreaming. Your timing is god tier, you guys. Kabito Kai says, Hello, old friend. Do you think we'd miss this tournament? We get so bored sitting around doing nothing these days, so we'd figured why not check out the tournament on GodTube. It was a great show, so as a one-off reward from the gods, me and Dende will patch you all up for such an excellent performance. Dende says, Go on, you guys saved the universe so many times, so a little first aid kit isn't going to ruin the balance of the cosmos. Everyone, make a cue behind the new champion. After healing, Gohan and Oob approach each other. Oob says, Gohan, but Gohan cuts him off and shakes his hand, giving him a pat on the shoulder. Oob, it's okay. We both did what we had to to prove we're the best. Plus, it makes the fight look a hell lot more interesting when we stop being goody goods for a while, right? Yeah, you're right. You're a great fighter, Gohan. I'd like to fight you again sometime when we're both at full strength. Gohan smiles and says, You're on, Oob. I'll be training for that day, so keep up the good work. I would apologize for breaking your legs, but you were the one that ripped off my tail first, so that was worth one leg. Plus you ate my brother, so that equaled two legs. They both laugh. Oob says, Oh yeah, oh sorry guys. He spits them out. Uh, 
and Goten and Trunks start grabbing each other in anger, seeing as they were both stuck in pods. Damn you, Trunks, we're gonna finish our match right now, unofficially. You're on, Goten. Go on and Oob, after such a brutal battle to be the best in the world, they walk out as friends. Hercule walks up to Oob and raises his hand in the ring. All right, you filthy maggots. Give it up for your new world champion. Oob looks to Hercule and says with a familiar voice, Boo, miss you, Hercule. Friend forever. We'll never leave you. Hercule cries. But, boo, it really was you. All right, champ, here's the belt. You deserve it. And hey, uh, you think I can win it off your next tournament? <laughs> Just kidding. My old back can't take it no more. See you later, kid. Oob runs up to Goku and says, Master Goku, we did it! But Goku grabs hold of Oob and pulls him in for a hug. No, you did it, Oob. I'm so proud of you. Goku walks over to Gohan, gives him a fist bump. Hey, son, great fight. You'd never believe who that guy was that you fought. Who was it, Dad? <laughs> I'll tell you on the way home, but right now, I'm starving. The tournament was over. Families and friends reunited, healed up, congratulating each other. GT truly stood for great time. What a day where everyone could come together for exciting times and the fate of the world was not at risk. And after those two years of peace, more times of peace would be drawing near. The world truly had changed since the Dragon Balls vanished. No twists, no earth ending plot, just characters we love who live their best lives, train and fight it out in tournaments to see who's the best. What more could a Dragon Ball fan ask for? And the credits roll. You didn't think that was it, did you? There's always something else. A few hours after the tournament, we find ourselves following Pan, who had flown towards Yunzabit Heights all alone. Pan would land down near some small grass area near a cave. And out from the cave, the former masked Saiyan, the Goku clone, the imposter, Pan smiles. And moments later, from the clouds above, crashing through them comes a spaceship, completely off the radar. It lands near Pan and the Saiyan, and the spaceship looks ancient. It looks Namekian. It opens, and from the ship walks Piccolo. Rise, Piccolo. Piccolo. Big Green is back. But how? He is meant to be the hired muscle in hell, keeping all the assholes in check. How is he on Earth? He walks out towards Pan. How did it go, kid? Did you show them who's boss? I sure it did, Mr. Piccolo. Huh. <laughs> the training didn't go to waste then. Piccolo looks at the Saiyan. And what about you? Did you see him? Yeah, I spoke with him. Just the two of us. He's grown into the very same man I saw in my visions. I missed out on all that. Did you tell him about the mission? Yeah, only him. He said he'll meet up with us in a little while, using some weird teleportation that he learned from the Yard Rats. That's fine. You can trust Goku to keep a secret. No one else can know what's going on here. If word gets out about us too. I know. We're toast. And don't you worry. There'll be more than enough time to get to know Kakarot a little bit more. We've still got a few months left before it happens. Are you both ready? Ready as I ever am, Junior. Let's put an end to that bastard once and for all. Pan shouts, all right, let's go! Oolong and Pua are covering for me at school and home, but the rest of this mission shouldn't take more than a few weeks. I'm an expert on this, you know. Piccolo throws Pan a black star Dragon Ball, and she puts it in the bag with three others. The only difference, these were still stone. Just how did they find these? Is it something to do with a nameless Namekian? Off we go, Piccolo! Ready up, Great Grandpa Bardock! It's time once again to step into the Grand Tour! Oh, Pan, will you stop saying that? Let's have another team motto. How about, leave this endless darkness, hold my hand. Seriously, Grandpa Burdock? Hey, I'm no good at this mushy grandpa stuff. Give me a break and don't call me that. You know how I feel about this non-canon stuff. And so, what exciting adventures await the three on their mysterious quest for the Black Star Dragon Balls? Who knows if this story will ever continue due to it not getting enough support because it doesn't have Beerus the Cat or God Key or Pui Pui with Omni Key. But if one day it does, always remember that there will be one man to step up and protect the world with his life in times of need. Farewell for now, Goku. And thank you all for joining me in this story of what if Goku never left with Shenron. A story with Dragon Ball GT continued until we meet again.